Bassist Kenny Passarelli tells us some interesting tales about working with Elton John and having to follow in Dee Murray's footsteps. I'm John Bowden from RockHistoryMusic.com. Being a big Elton John fan, like the first album I ever bought was Madman Across the Water. The second was Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. My best friend Jeff was a huge Elton John fan and he proceeded to educate me when I was in my early teens. And it took me a little while to get used to the 80s Elton John, but I ended up loving him too. And I especially love his new stuff. But I'm always, I'm tickled when I get to talk to some people that have played with Elton John. Now, I don't think I'll ever get a chance to interview Elton, just in case he's listening. I'd be open to it, Elton. I don't think that'll ever happen, but I do love talking to the people who have played with him, the people who have closely played with him. Last year, I talked to Caleb Quay. We're going to be putting that interview up right away as soon as I find it. I'm not sure where I put it. But a couple of weeks ago, I talked to Kenny Passarelli, who, of course, is getting back together with Barnstorm with uh, with Joe Walsh and the boys being inducted into Hall of Fame in Colorado. Very proud of that. Rocky Mountain Way, he's the guy who co-wrote that song with Joe Walsh. And that bass line is amazing. Played with um, Part of the Plan with Dan Fogelberg. Recently played with uh, Yosef Islam, better known as Cat Stevens. But his list is long. I'm not going to go through all of it tonight. But it was really important for me to get one of the videos out about working with Elton John in the beginning and what Elton John was looking for and the mayhem that was going on with Elton at the time. I don't think Elton planned to feel that way. He didn't want to feel that way. But in the 70s, sometimes he was dipping a little bit. And the most important part of this interview is, to me, Kenny Passarelli talking about replacing Dee Murray and Roger Pope replacing Nigel Olsen taken a lot of flack from D. Nigel uh, um, fans who said that I couldn't carry his jock strap or whatever. And I said, listen, D was wonderful and we didn't have a problem. I didn't fire him. It had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And I saw him in England right before I did the gig at, at uh, Wembley Stadium and I told him how much I admired him and he was in shock. He couldn't believe he got fired. As did Nigel. You're not talking about when you guys all did Captain Fantastic, which ended up yes. on the extended yes. on this. D yes. was there. He didn't come to the gig, but I went to his house to visit him. Okay. Because I felt so bad about. It. I wanted to say hello, and I knew he was he was completely. Uh, he was he was very depressed about about the end of it because whatever way Elton did it, it you know it was it was just what would the way Elton is. Yeah. And the way he is, I, I just saw his in, an interview just recently on his 70th birthday, day before, and it's the same guy. Once he decides he's going to do something, he's going to do it, and that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I respect him for what he's a phenomenal artist. And Roger Pope was an, was a great drummer, and I was very lucky to be in that circumstance. And by the time we got to to um, to Ontario, uh, to Toronto, to do. The Blue Moose record, those, rec those, we were doing it as a band, and that's why you've got Out of the Blue, and why you've got tracks like that. Which recently, I, I did two dates with uh, Kenny Loggins, three dates with Kenny Loggins. It was just his bass player couldn't do it. He called, "Can you do this?" Blah blah blah, and his guitar player, Scott Bernard, phenomenal guitar player, grew up listening to. And he's way young. He's in his forties. He grew up listening to Blue Moose. And he's a fusion guy too. And he said, man, that record is early. Fusion stuff was was really happening. And I said, well, yeah, it was happening as a band. We didn't write charts. That was made up in the studio. We put that together in rehearsal and then we were recording it. And Caleb pushed and Davey and everybody was pushing for, for, for uh, uh, Gus. We were so well rehearsed. He says, what's the need of overdubbing every bass part in there? And that was the thing with Rock of the West is except for Street Kids and the ba I forget one other song. Uh, Can you see uh, or you can't see? Uh, no. Read me Medley, the Danny Dare, Island Girl, Grow Some Funk, I Feel Like a Bullet, Street Kids, Hard Luck Story, Feed Me, and uh, Billy Bones. Okay, Feed Me and Street Kids mm, are the only two that were uh, two, two that were taken from the original uh, basic tracks 
Everything really? else I had to record. I had to overdub because he insisted on it. And we walked out of the, the recording part of Caribou Ranch. And as I walked by the control room, he signaled for me to come in and said, I'm sorry. He didn't even say, I'm sorry. He said, I, did, I just can't get a sound on your fretless. And I said, you got to be kidding me, because that's what he told me when we did the Wembley concert. That Those tapes were never supposed to be released. Make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate that and share our videos. And make sure you subscribe to our Facebook page, because Rock History Music has a Facebook group. And uh, I have a Facebook group, and we both have Twitter groups. And if you want to follow us, check it out. And check out our older videos, too. Am I rambling? I'm excited about talking to people who have worked with Elton John. We're going to have a lot more parts of this interview with the great Kenny Passarelli, who was just a, a dream to talk to. And by the way, sorry about the, the fact that only his eyes are showing in part of the video because we were having problems with the software that records Kenny. It wasn't his fault. It was basically all my fault. I'm John Bowden from rockhistorymusic.com.